investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi folks, we're going to start off with the dreaded H. And it looks like a straight line down, then there's an arch formation. And I have it read because if you take out that left side low, you can go quite a bit lower. You've got, a two, you've got two, maybe three bars in which to close above that left side low to be able to inaugurate some kind of you know, counter trend rally. Uh, it's really a very, in a bear phase, that's one of the patterns you see over and over and over. Well, lo and behold, we just saw that we went from a peak D, fourth highest peak in the Chapman wave where other things can happen. Well, right at the 200 period moving average in that move at 930, we popped up there and then plunge and we hit what, 3750, I think that was 57, no, 50. Yes, 3757.75, came down sharply, had two little doji candles, rallied, made the arch formation, fell to the peak C, and now we've taken out that left side low, and this is more, this is the fifth bar after that. That means this is where you get a bit of a struggle to see, are you able to get back into that arch? The reason why I wanted to show this pattern with a large rectangle and then the semicircle semi arch formation breaking the low is because that's what I'd say to subscribers. We're watching very closely. Uh, let me go to that. There it is. So let's go to the Dow pattern, INDU. And what I'd said is that move from 31,885 in the, uh, from the June 17th low of 29,653 runs up almost 2,000 points to 31,885. And then stalls, pulls back. There's your straight line down. And then it makes the R formation fails at that B. And that's what I was afraid of. For three days, we had a chance that that nine period moving average would not stay pink, but would try to go to green. It did that. For two days, we saw it. I, had, In fact, during my show, it flashed green. I said, no, the day's young. We can't believe that that's going to happen. We were along the Dow, um, and then we added, uh, I didn't expect to get that yesterday, but we had a position lower down. But it had a really tight stop on both positions. This is a short-term positions on the Dow. Actually, they ran up very nicely. The first one ran up very sharply. We took some profits, but then we, we got out. So very small losses, um, and we're out. So we have raised cash. This is one of the largest cash positions we've had in a long time. Um, I'm having tight stops on anything that we do buy. I'm, I'm just not interested. Why? Because when, this, when eventually this market starts to make higher highs and higher lows, in the weekly chart, not a single leg A or a B, and it fails as this, these dreaded H patterns have been working uh, since the high of 36,952 January, the week of January the 5th of this year. Uh, every failure has been peak A or peak B, uh, one or two peaks, and then it fails. This is the second time we've got an A. Uh, yeah, since the peak B minus, we're in peak A, went A minus, when we plunged down to the low of 29,653 on the 17th of June. And yeah, we are with a bounce, and we're at a 161.8 retracement right now at 30,169. Ha, huh. now comes the very big, big, big issue. I would, I would say that within the next hour and a half, it might have to, if, if we, in the next hour and a half, if the Dow doesn't bounce a little bit to be down only 475, but stays in this area, we might be running out of time because any any turnaround after that, uh, that would mean that we'd probably have to, uh, I'd put it at 243, just, just before quarter to three in the afternoon. Uh, that might be another time. Otherwise, it might just be a late rush to buy uh, thinking that maybe the news, economic news tomorrow will be good. All I can say is that this pattern right now has gone uh, in this little mini pattern to the lowercase h. But in the bigger pattern, you ran down from 32,272 in the Dow to 29,653 on the 17th of June, up to 31,885. 
and that is creating its own big arch formation. I don't want to be messing around at all. I want subscribers to have cash. We've had some trades. We've actually made money on the trades. We've lost a little bit. We've actually made more than we've lost. And that's really important in a market market like this. But constantly, and I did have one position that I thought could last a little longer. And I'll tell you what it is right now. It was in the IBB. And one of the reasons is that the IBB had a huge leg up to leg B. And then it pulled back just a little bit. And it was almost reluctant that it was the IBB is the NASDAQ uh, biotech ETF. And you can see that MACD was good, stochastic was over 80%, was actually 95%. But I'm not taking any chances. We got in at uh, 123.86. 120.86, I believe, is sub three points. It's not even, uh, it's just over 2%. I'm not interested. If this starts to climb again and become a, a little bit of a leader because the biotechs, especially the microcap biotechs, have been just unbelievable. Um, but if this doesn't start to move quickly to the 124.50 area, it's at 120.62. I mean, quickly by Monday or Tuesday, not even this, which was a leader, at, at just for a certain point of the counter trend. Look at this dreaded H pattern. And then within two bars, it took out that left side low. It ran back up again. That's usually a good sign. Look at the technicals, how they were improving. And yet the persistence of the selling pressure, and that's what I was saying to subscribers. Uh, for three days, I've been saying caution prevails, caution prevails. And uh, now we can see what's going on. So I, I, I mentioned yesterday, I'm going to do this. I really don't like to talk about personalities because um, – I have respect for a lot of people in the business. I certainly have incredible respect for people like Larry Williams, uh, uh, Tom DeMarc. I even have tremendous respect for someone like uh, uh, Jim Cramer. He's introduced and made money for hundreds of thousands of people. I'm sure it's lost money as well, but I've followed him since 1986, um, not daily or anything like that, but just followed his comments, etc. And I, I'm always impressed with his knowledge. Now, what happens is that every once in a while, he had nothing to do with technical analysis for years. In fact, I once won a competition. What was the stock? It was Akamai. Akamai Technologies, way, way back, it had gone to 350 or 360, round number high. Had this incredible sell signal and came tumbling down. It went to pennies, uh, 50 cents or something. Um, I even remember buying a lot at about 57 cents or 75 cents, something like that. And I got out a little after that with a really good profit. I woo -hoo, pat myself on the back. And then I ran up high. But he had a competition once to say, what stock out of these four stocks, and he named uh, Akamai as one of them, which one would reach uh, double digits the soonest? And I used my Chapman Wave left side, right side price, time match and all that stuff. And I, I, I won the competition. Uh, Akamai went to $10 in even a little bit shorter time frame than I said it could. And um, so I've always had respect for his knowledge, what he does, how, how you know, he's always said Apple is, uh, don't trade Apple, uh, buy Apple and hold. I don't know what his position is lately, but he had done that for years. And then what happens is once in a while he gets, he, he has a Tom DeMarc technical analysis, he has Carly, uh, Carly, not Carly Simon, uh, Carly, Carly. Any probably whatever name is, and he has uh, a Tom DeMarc analysis. I'll talk about it when I return because I think it's quite significant what happens. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vistagold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vistagold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vistagold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vistagold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Oh, folks, we're back. So, yeah, not Carly Simon, of course. La, 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 la. Not Carly Simon, but Carly Gone. In fact, I got right. Yeah, technical analysis of stocks and commodities, uh, one of the last articles. Uh, she is an outstanding technician. She uh, always has a, 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 a section in the future section uh, in the Stocks and Commodities magazine. Anyway, so what happened recently is over a period of a year, he might have maybe uh, hardly ever has Tom in on market, probably once in two years. But Larry Williams, he has a little bit more often. And Larry, of course, one of the great, great technicians. Well, they're all fabulous, fantastic technicians. But all of a sudden, there was a rush. He had um, Tom DeMarc. He had uh, Tom DeMarc recently, but he also had, for the second time in just like a couple of months, he had Larry Williams. And as I'm listening to that the other day, I, I mean, just to get this this one section. Well, did I see it on uh, YouTube? Whatever it is, I said to myself, "Uh oh." That's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. You know, I have an expression when you take your hands off the wheel to pat yourself on the back. That's when you hit the uh, the uh, tree. Well, I I was a little shocked that Larry Williams would come on that soon to say that things are really looking good. He could still be right. But the fact is, that in the shorter term, the market really hasn't taken off. So um, I, I just wanted to say that. I use many things as indicators. A great deal of it just is storage right there in my memory. Uh, it just sits there uh, and it just, it, it only pops up. It's like almost all the technical analysis I've ever done. I don't go looking. Do you think I, I, I look for the seven wave fall? No, I was counting the peaks at some point years ago when I used to hand chart. And I suddenly said, wait, at the seventh, the seventh peak, I'll alphabetize them because uh, Practor was talking about the um, Elliott wave over and over, and, the, and I thought, I, I don't want to get this mixed up with Elliott wave. It has nothing to do with the Elliott wave. Um, I, I use just the peaks. I'm not going to label them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, uh, 9. I'm going to, uh, or whatever it is, I'm going to alphabetize them, A, B, C, D. And then I, I and 2000, in 1987, 
uh, Fidelity was my first client. They were, it was a, a trial run in the summer, and then they said, okay, we like your work. In a, I had a hotline, the, the, technical, the principal technical analyst there uh, would call in the hotline. And I said, you know what, I've got seven waves to the upside in my Dow chart. I don't know, 27, 35, I don't know what it was. Oh, it was 27, 27 maybe. I said, I think it can go higher. I, I've noticed that these waves can go a little bit higher. Maybe it goes to a leg E. Well, I went to a leg E, and then I got my cell signal. Um, that was in 1987. That was August, around right about the 22nd. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. I'm sure, Larry Pesaventa would name the exact minute of the day. I'm not able to do that. Um, but anyway, it made a high, and then, of course, we came tumbling down. And then within the techniques that I had, that became part of my technique. So it was trial and error. It was just discovery. It was a whole bunch of things. Then one of the things that I used to do, I used to hand chart, and I had this whole single line paper going two two pages of uh, uh, um, a notebook, and I would div divide it. I had this 0 0.03 pen. No, it was a 0 0.01. 0 0.01. I would divide these, out, and I would write in the tiniest print the high of the day, the low of the day. All all these different indices took forever. I also did on balance volume, writing it out on balance volume. Anyway. I used to circle in yellow any 0% change. That was one of the techniques I do, meaning if the Dow closed at those days at 2700, a 0% change is not such a big deal. It had almost a 0% change recently. I didn't do a yellow, a yellow marker on it, but at, at 30, in the 33,000, 31,000 area, that's quite something to have a 0% change. So I had all these different techniques. So one of the things that I'm looking at here is the trap wave one-to-one -one expansion. And that is, look, a parallel line, I've got it here on the dollar, and the difference between an A to B equals C to D is, first of all, I don't use that because I use one to one, uh, but that's the principle. But it's where you take the next uh, level, and it has to be the same number of bars, it has to be the same angle, that's the difference between the one to one, and usually it has to have the same degree of thrust up or down. Well, the dollar has just gone above the one to one, which would have taken it to about 108.20. It's at 109.04. And in the Chapman wave, another technique that just, it, it came upon itself. I didn't go looking. Do you think I de developed a, a seven wave form that goes to a, a peak D? And then I had to change it to a, a wave form that goes to an E, F, and even a G, but never an H? Do you think when it went to a D that I, I immediately said, oh, if in three in two to three bars, if it makes a new high, I could get what's called a Chapman wave instant restart? No, it cost a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of frustration until I figured it out. But if the, the, the price you're following goes to a new recovery high within two to three bars, then it becomes an E, and then you can have in your mind an E slash A, and then an F slash B and a G slash C, and invariably the G slash C does pull back, but then it can go to a D, and then it wraps up the whole thing. So to make it as simple as possible, the dollar is in leg E, but most importantly, and I discussed this all week, the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, is fantastic. We've been along the dollar since 2018, April at 90, 90.07, via the UUP. We watched it go all the way to 102.99, we took one little bit off at 96, somewhere along the way, and then it pulled back all the way to 89.21. Hell, the UUP held. We still kept the long position because I still said, I think the U.S. is still the best economy, and this is an icon of the U.S. economy. That's, that might change very soon, but so far. And we've got a leg C in the uh, monthly chart. So far, I can't call it anything else but a C. The monthly chart, MACD is good. The stochastic's fantastic at 89% and flat. It's getting a little overbought in time, but that just says it's a monthly chart. Overbought means it can go another two, three months. It can go another week. You never know. And the weekly and the monthly, uh, sorry, the weekly chart is in leg D. Uh, this is with the MACD strong, and both in the in the the, the monthly and the weekly nine period moving average is way above the 14. It is way above the cup formation, beautiful bowl or cup formation from the 102.99 high. It's gone all the way to 109. That's seven points. That's 7%, about 7% higher. And that says 
the dollar at this point has tremendous support between 105 and 103. That's the 9 and 14 period moving, weekly moving averages. The MACD is good. Stochastic great at 88%. I'd prefer it was 92, but at 88, I'm not complaining. Um, and oh, the, uh, yes, uh, two days ago, we took a little bit off our UUP uh, for what is it, 20, 20 something percent gain. Um, and that's, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. We've got a big core position. I'm holding that core position. I just don't see any reason why subscribers should do anything else about it. But I am saying that this stochastic at 91% with the relative strength improving, there's a little gray line. The MACD so so wide, the histogram's still very strong. It's just starting to weaken a tad. That means that the nine period differential is slowly moving towards the, the distance between the 26 period moving average and the... Uh, Nine period differential is just diminishing a little bit, but it's still very strong. So with that in mind, what we're looking at is the Euro, EUR, USD, trying to find support at par, and now it's at 0.998. And this big, big move that I said, the inverse of the dollar, look at that beautiful left side, right side price time match, which took forever to break and it broke under it. I'll talk about the rumor. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So uh, within that context, and I'm always looking at the sine wave. In other words, the arch, then the cup, then the arch and the cup. And for those of you in the den, you probably saw that I put uh, an up arrow right here to say that there would be, uh, I drew in this arch, left side, the the, uh, the left side is the quarrow, that's the, the quarter of a semicircle, and I started drawing the cup formation on the right side, that is the, the ellipse on the right side, but remember the, uh, the objective in the channel wave is always to get uh, from a bicycle to a bi mode, meaning the technicals improve, technicals improve, and then you can raise, you can upgrade 
that buy signal to a buy mode, meaning there should be at least a D. Well, we went to a D, but look how small it is. We aren't even underneath that sharp candle that started the big sell off at 10.01 this morning, Eastern Time at uh, 37.37. Uh, let's call it 37.37, uh, which re then went to the low of the day so far, 37.23.75. But what's good is that the nine finally, this is what I wanted the Dow to do, and it did it only momentarily, but it did not hold, is that get that nine period across above the 14 period. It's so important. But we've also used up, and then what I do is on the left side, I take a particular bar in the Chapman Wave methodology. I use that to draw a, a, what I call the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. I'll make this darker just for now. Um, it's usually light green and it's dashed, and it says, that's your resistance level. And if on the way you get close to a C and then pull back, you should probably try to make a D. We failed here. We only went to a C. And then in the, that was the one at uh, 9.55 or so. And now look at this. We've gone to a peak D and there's still no real strength. So the strength has to be, look at the 200 period moving average, how important it has been. This is the one minute chart. How important can a one minute chart be? Oh, yeah. Look at this. It was a failure pattern right there at 8.30 this morning. Uh, it was a failure again at 9.30. It was, uh, it, we're not even close to it right now, and that's at 37.45. So anytime today, if there is a trade, I would normally say above the 37.45 in this particular instance of the 200 period moving average, that's not good enough. You actually have to trade above, way above the 9.32 a.m., Eastern time high of 37.37.75. So 37, did I say 35? 37.57.75. So 37.63, anytime today, if we start to get to 37.63, that's 40 uh, points above from here, that's when I'd say, you know what, the, the, the low that we've made so far today that maybe is a tradable, yet another tradable low for another arch formation in the daily chart. But you've got to be really careful. I, I suspect that this low, that um, this little double bottom low here, and in the den we have one of our uh, wizard uh, traders who said, I'd like another drop after, uh, after it took off from 37.30. Well, you got that other drop. Now let's see what happens here. Uh, that was very astute. And we've also said, if the dollar could drop now, we will be okay for a rebound. Um, Maria, I think uh, you're going to have, yeah, I think you're, you're absolutely right. But you're going to have to trade in some croissants to see that happen. All right, there we've got that spike. So that, that means you're looking at the MACD deflected higher. I love that. It's a good start to at least attempting to form some kind of a tradable base, intraday trading only. Stochastic's very weak set at 56. On balance volume is trying to rally. So this is just a bounce. And at this particular point, I have no choice but to call it an E. A lot of people said, do you mind if you could? I, I know it takes away from your questions that you get asked, uh, etc. But is it even possible uh, for you to do some of this intraday stuff to show some of your techniques? your myriad techniques. All right, there I've got. Now, let's get back to our story. Enough of that. People are saying, all right, what's the big deal? You're talking about the euro. Well, look at the euro. It broke in this huge arch formation. Look at the way I, I measured it from the plumb line that I chose. And I did this ages ago. Oh, maybe uh, almost, uh, I think it was about a year ago. I said, watch this closely. That's my plumb line. I'm going to draw this in. Let's just let it play out. I've done nothing other than I've updated the notation, Chapman Wave uh, alphabet here, A, B, C, D, et cetera. Either on the downside, it's lowercase. On the upside, it's uppercase. So here it is, and it's plunged underneath the par. That, you know, when you look at look at this inverse, it's like a mirror image. Keep your eye on this one. This is the weekly chart. Here we go. Plop. Now you've got the upside. And here it is, very strong in leg D. But D is where other things can happen. All right, that's where you take your foot off the accelerator, hover over the brake. That's why we took a second time. We've taken just a little bit off from the UUP long position uh, way back at uh, 23, and now it is at 28. Um, so, uh, yeah. So what we're looking at is 
Leg D, MACD, strong stochastic is really good at 89%. I don't have on balance volume because it's a dollar index. So that's what I'm looking at. So it's really, these patterns repeat over, I just drew it in, the cup formation, right? I also drew in the left side, right side price time. I also drew in right here, you can see this dash. I better make it a little bit darker so you can see. Uh, green, uh, let's make it, as, uh, that's too dark, it doesn't matter, okay. There, that's what, that was the, the, the price time match was right to there on the week of the 15th of April. I anticipated if this was following true to plan, 102.99. Let's just see if that's still the case. Yeah, 102.99, the March tw week of March 20th, 2020. That's when the market, general market made it slow. That's when the euro made, uh, the dollar made its high. And I said, we should, well, it missed it. Oh, it missed it. It was two days, two weeks late. And then it just smashed through. It went right to, 103.93. So this is a technique. It's just a technique, one of the mirror techniques that everybody has techniques. This is one of my techniques. But look at the nine period moving average. It crossed positive over here, right there. The week of the 2nd of July, two years ago, oh, one year ago, uh, 2021. And it's been green ever since, even when it had the consolidation in January of 2020, December, January of 21, 20, uh, January 22. Um, it still stayed green and it's been green ever since. And that, to me, it's a, one of the simplest techniques you could ever find. And that's just, hey, it said, hold the position, hold the position. All right, within that context, I want to now go through a whole bunch of things. Um, if you look at silver, I just want to do silver quickly. Uh, silver has pulled back sharply. It's gone to a leg E to the down. Very quick, D to E says, you might be ready for a little bit of a, a bounce here, even if it's uh, on the way down. Oops, that's a lowercase E because the way down. A low E. And this is G slash C in the weekly chart. And remember, our rule of the rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. If it pops out of the rectangle, make sure that when it comes back, it doesn't break halfway of the rectangle because then you could test the base. And when it goes from the outside, it goes back from the outside on the upside, possibly to the outside on the downside. Often it, pop, it goes below the rectangle support level, and it's so quick that it has to go back just to say, I never said goodbye to my friends, and it just pops back long enough to say goodbye, and then it goes down sharply, and that's exactly what the silver has done. So within this context, now we have to go to the VIX index. Someone said, uh, actually a couple of people said, could you just give kind of an overview uh, with your techniques, you don't have to make any predictions per se. Just tell us where these things are. Well, look at this. The volatility index, which is trading now up $1.30 at 2812, is still under yesterday's high. That's disbelief. And then one of the things about disbelief is that eventually the disbelievers become believers. And that's the thing that made me a little nervous when on Monday. Oh, uh, sorry, Friday we touched the 200 units for the 25s, and then we start to rally. I'll be back in a moment. How's that? TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstat has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, yes, so let me just do this quickly. I've got advanced micro devices question came up. Uh, TGTX and GRBK. And I will get to them in a moment. First, I want to go to, we've got a caller. We've got a caller in Texas. We've got Steve in Austin, Texas. Steve, how are you? I'm doing well, Basil. Thank you for taking my call. Um, my quickly, is uh, I just wanted to get your opinion on DBA, uh, what you think of it as a trading vehicle, and also where it is uh, in your uh, opinion where um, if you were going to go long something like that should you and also if you went long what would be your stop and that type of thing so just give me some background what do you think of the think of it as a trading vehicle and what 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 your opinion is of it so the DBA is the DB Agriculture Fund. We belong since uh, 1377 back I think it was in 2020 maybe April, uh, so, and we've taken lots of little bits off, and I said, you know, I don't like this peak G in the weekly chart, I don't like the peak E in the monthly chart, I'm really worried about it, so we took a little bit more off, we've got a, a much smaller core position, and I actually said, you know what, when it broke the 200 period moving average of 20 in the 20.60s area, I said, you know, I, maybe we get out of it completely and then just treat it as a trading vehicle so we'd be in exactly the position you're in right now. You're looking at it fresh. I'd be looking at it fresh if we were out. I mean, we're still up uh, six points. It's not bad for a $13 stock. But that's really not the point. The point is, when you, let me go through this. So we're looking at wheat. That's wheat. Wheat has made a peak D in the weekly chart and the pattern that I was talking about in the Dow and the pattern I was talking about in the one minute chart of the E-mini, these patterns repeat over and over. What happens is you come down sharply, then you make mm -hmm. an arch formation and if you take out that left side low and within two to three bars, it doesn't go back above that left side high. It's, it's a big problem. So what happened is in the uh, weekly chart, it took out the left side low just under um, a thousand and that was the April low. Uh, it had run up to, to the 1280s, and now it's 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 trading at 804. So this is the pattern that we you see. This is the weekly chart, I should I should say. Now the big base that we're looking at is in the 800s with a little doji candle that that had a low. So that's wheat. So uh, within that context, if we look at soybeans, this is part of this uh, agriculture fund as well. I've kind of lost all the notation because it gets smoothed out. Nothing. The, ch the notation never changes, just the price does. So it made a, a beautiful left side, right side price time match. It made a high, oh, I've lost it completely. I wonder if I can actually change that. 
almost looks like a two to one split. Anyway, it came down sharply from the high that was made in the 1540s uh, or so. And that was a peak, I believe that was a peak D. And then it pulled back and it hit the 200 period moving average in the daily chart. So it being uh, just about uh, beginning of July. And then it, in, the, in the seven days since, it's retesting the 200 period moving average for the second day. So that says soybeans are actually acting poorly. If you look at corn or corn, as we say, yeah, did exactly the same, same thing. Oh, they all, I think they made a peak A, B, C, D. Yeah. And that made a high uh, back in uh, late April, beginning of May uh, in the 730s. And it's down at the 600 area, 605 right now with the same double bottom. So I, my big, and uh, let me go to sugar. Sugar is part of this as well. And sometimes sugar leads and sometimes it doesn't. Right now, sugar is acting much better because it's gone above the 200 period moving average. I don't think it's strong enough to do very much. So my, my thinking right now is that with the crude oil pulling back sharply, the crude oil is, I think it's maybe a, just a tiny part of this. But the crude oil, the DBC, which we once owned, is, is has much more crude oil. It just says to me that the agricultural side is really weak right now. This is exactly what you'd be looking at if you're doing a market analysis and saying, what would what would it take to see the, the general market moving much higher? And in fact, the general market has been moving much lower. And it's basically now the interpretation has been flipped on its head. Instead of saying, uh-oh, uh, the commodities are pulling back, uh, oil's pulling back, that should be great for the market. The market's saying, uh-oh, oh, if if they can't even hold those prices, if crude oil is pulling back, it means that the economy is starting to weaken. So it really, I'm just doing the chart pattern. I'm not doing the actual, the verbal stuff that goes with it. And the chart patterns say that there's a really good chance that the DBA could become a trading vehicle for a bounce. But I would treat mm -hmm. the whole area of the 19s as really an important area to watch. So I, I do this in my newsletter every day, update the DBA, what to do, what, what we're looking at. Um, and we, you know, we've had over, you know, we've had a, some very good gains. I'm just trying not to get let it get into my head to say, well, it's because we, I've done that before with certain positions that we had huge gains in. We took profits all the way. But then I kept some part of it, and then that some part of it really came back sh sharply. I don't want to be in that position right now. I, I'm, I'm looking to maybe get out and then start fresh. I don't mind even buying higher. I don't mind buying lower. But I'm not sure I want the overhang right now. So I'm still thinking through whether I keep a small core position on the DBA. So in your case, your question is, if I treated it as a, as a trading vehicle, where would you maybe go short or where would you go long? I would think of going short if it went up to 20.60 and the technicals weren't confirming because then it could come back down to treat to test the 19. That's only a dollar, so it's 10 percent. But the buy, I think we're getting close to at least an attempt to form a base based on the MACD slowly improving, the stochastic slowly improving. But I'm watching the 19s very closely. If it closes under 19, I might have to rethink at any entry point. So mm -hmm. it's really so tough. So 19 because is your, your low end, and then you're thinking on a bounce. Uh, the, the best would be somewhere around 20 and a half I don't know so. if it would be the best, but that would be my upside target if the technical suddenly started to improve and I got the successful dreaded H pattern, which turned into a cup formation. The moment it started to go above 20.20, .20, I say, great. 2052 would be my next level of, uh, of watch, uh, watching closely because if it broke above the left side high that was made at 2052 on the 11th and closed above that, then the 200 period moving average or 20.69 is, is the next thing. I probably would say I wouldn't even think of shorting until I got the signal to say that the bounce hasn't got the veracity. And the weekly chart says it's going to take a lot to get a really generate a really good tradable uh, rally, not a bounce, but a tradable rally in the DBA at this particular point. So I'm just going to say to you, I wouldn't have a fixed number in mind, but mm -hmm. the 19 area is kind of what I'm watching. A close below that says, how um, uh, how does it rebound to go back to 1955? That's really the story. So I'm, I, I don't know if I treat it as one of your tradables right now. 
But if you are thinking that, why don't you give me a call in another day or two? Let's see what's happening. If it's already back, it hasn't gone below 19 and it's at, 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 at 20.30, I say, you know what? Maybe there's a little bit of a rebound now, but it's kind of risky. I just, I don't see okay. it as the trade. Hope that helps you. It, it's, it does because it's, it's one that will, I'll just stay away from. Just for the moment, yeah. And I'll talk about it on my, on my way next week, so I won't be talking about it next week. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you for calling. I appreciate that. I'll be back, folks. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We just got a moment. Yeah, I think tomorrow will be my last day uh, on my show for the, the next week. I'm going to be away. I will be doing my newsletter. As I said, we've built up a very big cash position. I, I don't mind putting that money to work, but I've got it. I, I'm still putting in tight stops. Uh, and even with gains, we get take out gains very quickly. Just treating this as a trading market right now. So a question came in about advanced micro devices. I, I don't like the action at all until advanced micro devices is actually trading for a whole week. It's at 76 uh, until it's trading at 82 to 83 for a whole week, I'd say, you know what, it's just kind of stuck. Taiwan Semiconductor came out with earnings today. TWM, is that right? No, oh, man, T. Uh, anyway, it, it's up and it had a, a very strong, uh, a strong move. But that's very select. And I'd just be a little careful. It's just very singular at this particular point. But I, the way I'm looking at the market, I'm not 
over, I'm not so pessimistic that I think nothing's going to work. I think there are particular, um, look, even now, under all these conditions, the Dow is holding above the low of recent low. So I'm trying to be constructive. D, D, TGTX was the next question. Um, that is, oh, another, TG Therapeutics uh, had an Eiffel Tower. This is one. Yes, this is a strong leg C. I like this action. In the micro, as uh, 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 micro, uh, biotechs, this, they're fantastic uh, gains being made, and some of them are absolutely quite extraordinary. This is acting very well at 6.14. It's in leg C. If it make, if it doesn't make a new high today, it becomes a peak C. Next question was uh, go, go, uh, GRTB, uh, G, GRBK. Is that, I hope I got that right. Yes, GRBK, big pop to the upside, up 9% uh, at 23.65. Uh, There's something about the green. Mark, it's not chip green packs. It's green packs also doing that. Yeah, I've got to be careful. The support has a 20 to 20 grid moving average. So just remember, it's going to take the Dow to really move higher than E mini, as I said before. E mini has not much out of that. The moment, but the Dow has to be minus.